Good morning everyone. I am here at Audi Fest 2019 at the awesome Sonoma Raceway and uh, I thought I'd make a little video about how do you adjust your tire pressures. So I'm going to go over some of the tools I use and a methodology in order to dial in my tire pressures for the track. So here are the tools that I use when I'm trying to adjust my tire pressures. Um, I have a little IR gun and what I use this for is I use this for taking the temperature of the pavement. A lot of people take you know the ambient temperature but it's really the pavement temperature that matters. Um, the next tool I use is a, a combination tire pressure uh, reader as well as pyrometer so this one's by Longacre and I love this unit because um, it can store memory so when you first boot it up uh, you can get your tire pressures and if you hit the store memory button right it stores all four corners as you can see um, and now hold it to reset and then additionally it comes with this probe and this probe which I can plug into the side here will allow me to go into the temperature side and this is what I'll use to probe my tires internal temperatures. So let's go ahead and go over to the car and uh, I'll show you how I do that. So when I first get off the track I'm going to go ahead and take my tire pressures and I'm always going to start at the front passenger side and work my way around the car in a clockwise fashion. So front passenger side, rear passenger side, rear driver side and then front driver side. Now you'll notice I turn the wheels all the way and that's so I have an easier time accessing the face of the wheel when I take parameter measurements. So I'm going to put my tire pressure sensor on the Schrader valve, get the pressure and hit store memory. Next we're going to take our tire temperature readings and so once again I'm going to start with the front passenger side. I'm going to take the probe and I'm just going to stick it in the core. Now we're always going to work our way from the outside of the tire towards the inside and when we do the edges we'll do it about an inch to an inch and a half from the side. So I'm going to stick my probe in here, record the temperature, stick my probe in the middle, record the temperature and then lastly do the same for the inside. So this is my tire temperature and pressure tracking sheet. Um, I got this template from a gentleman named Don Klinkenbeard, uh, who was a franchise owner for Hooked on Driving in the Pacific Northwest. Super helpful guy, taught me a lot of cool little tricks here and there. And um, if we look at it, we can you know record stuff like you know our pressures for each of our tires, as well as the temperatures of each of those tires. Um, so based upon previous data I had, um, I decided to start off my tire pressures uh, at 31.5 in both front and 33.2 in each rear. And after the first session of t today, um, I really only really had to make a very minor change. Uh, if you look at this left front temperatures, uh, the middle t of the tire temperature was lower than the outer two, so that means I need to inflate the tire more. And since um, the way pressure changes, it's about 1 PSI for every 10 degrees. I decided to boost it by about 0.6 PSI. Um, this left rear uh, wasn't too bad actually, but uh, I decided to give the tire a little bit more support to see what that would do. Um, but you know, in an HPD environment, when you're not coming straight into the hot pits and taking your temperatures right away, uh, you know, we're, we're not always going to see perfectly even temperatures uh, across and so you know seeing something like this over here or on the right side where I have a bit of a temperature gradient isn't necessarily a bad thing it's not not a bad sign you know you have a cool down lap and you come into the pits uh, and then you go into the paddock and you park your car and if you're you know have an instructor you probably talk to your instructor a little bit so you know unfortunately there is a little bit of a, a delay between you know when you've hit that track feature or corner to when you can actually get your measurements so we do have to take a best guess a bit with the data that we have and um, you know, if you look at the theory, a lot of them will say, oh, well, you know, if your inner is hotter and you have a gradient out, it means you have too much camber. And yeah, you know, this temperature gradient is a result of the amount of camber I have in the rear. Um, however, uh, you know, that's not necessarily a, a bad thing or mean that things are very unoptimal. So uh, if I look at my session two, two uh, data, um, it, it doesn't look that bad. So looking at session two, uh, 
you know, I had pretty even temperatures across the front, pretty even across, you know, both left and right. And then in the rear, uh, I had that gradient that I was talking about. However, I did feel the rear was a little bit squirrely, losing a little bit of grip on a couple of corners, which is why I decided to try uh, lowering the pressure to get a little bit of that back. So on the rear right, I lowered it by 0.5, and then on the rear left, I lowered it by 0.3. So essentially, I undid the change that I wanted to experiment and test with uh, in session one. So looking now at the session three that I just did, um, Honestly, the car felt really good. Everything felt well supported, and uh, you know, you may be looking at my pressures and saying, "Oh my gosh, that's so high!" You know, everyone on the internet I've seen says you should be like, you know, 32 to 35 psi. Well, those guys also don't have, you know, a 4,100 pound car, so it's really going to depend on the weight of your vehicle. And since my vehicle is quite heavy, I am going to be running higher tire pressures uh, that are optimal. So, you know, I'm happy with the. Uh, the performance of the car and uh, taking my tire temperatures shows that you know I have mostly even in the front and a slight gradient in the rear but you know 14 degrees isn't all that much so this is uh, this is pretty good and I'm just gonna keep it there I'm not gonna change anything